quality handmade soaps where handmade is the best made proudly making soap for over five years quality handmade soap sets the standard in both quality and safe ingredients perfect for the holiday season I'm telling you right now, you see that black rose soap? I got that in my shower. And man, let me tell you what, your husband or wife will love it. Use promo code VHHN2022 to get 15% off your first purchase. Link is in the description box. Let's go. Definitely uh, great information. Um, I was reading an article um, you did years back when you were talking about Biggie and Tupac and how you used to try to keep them out of trouble. And then you also went on to pretty much say uh, you think that their death was a sacrifice to bring awareness to how foolish things can get when media puts fire under controversy and it turns into something bigger. Can you kind of talk about uh, Biggie and Tupac and the media's role in that whole beef, if you may? Yeah, well, well, um, that's a great question because uh, once again, you know, back then, you know, because me and Puff were very tight, and Puff used to used to run with me heavy, you know, and he used to be involved with me and do a lot of different things with me, and so we had this relationship. So when he started to expand on doing his thing, he had Biggie. So he called me in, and I used to train him, and I used to train Biggie to give them some guidance on you know, how to make their formula work better because they were, you know, they was on the rise. They was hype. They was ready to go. And, um, and big, big was a really good person. He was a very nice person. You know what I mean? He had a good spirit, but you know, once again, you know, he was so talented. I've watched people get surrounded by people who are, were what I call takers. And a lot of people are not givers. So when you see a guy like that with that kind of talent, you got people that's taking and taking and taking and nobody's giving. And we used to talk about that stuff. And I used to look at him and see how he would try to look out for his whole crew. You know, you see how Junior Mafia and all of these other artists just, just kind of branched off of him, you know? So he was always that kind of guy. And I was cool with him. And at the same time, I was cool with Tupac. But Tupac was a guy who was very emotional and he was very emotional where like he hears something or if he thought you thought something, he would attack you or come at you because he did not care. And he wanted to get to the bottom of it right then and there. So sometimes I used to have to stop him from doing certain things because I knew those things would cause even more conflict and it would make people look at him from a controversial level even more. And everybody associated him with the West Coast, but Tupac was from the East Coast. Yep. So which was right, which was crazy. And I would go East, West, East, West, North, South, it didn't matter. But when I seen that there was this, this rivalry between the East and the West, I was doing everything that I could to try to squash it. You know what I mean? And one of my reasons for even getting with Hammer and getting with his label because I felt like if me and him could get together and make money together, it'll show people how foolish it was for mm. us to be getting into this beef while everybody is capitalizing off of the beef. <clears throat> so so I, I watch the news, I watch the magazines take these situations and put the flame up under them and and not take any responsibility for it so that's why when i came on here i acknowledge your show because you have the ability to put the flame under it or you have the ability to put you know the truth out there or you have the ability to take it and make it a whole lot of different things so at that time i just think people didn't realize what was going on and how deep this thing was going to get and it got so deep and so dark that two extremely talented artists got taken out of here sooner than they should have been taken out of here. And it got so deep that I don't know if you know this, that we called a meeting 
at Minister Farrakhan's house and all of the artists from the East Coast, artists from the West Coast came to his house and we sat and we had a conversation and we resolved that particular beef that nobody could resolve without the minister. And, and everybody was there, magaz different people from magazines and Keith Klingstale was there at the time. Uh, um, Russell was there, Fat Joe drove in and somebody who was there that I wanna say, it was so deep to meet him because I never met him before. And I got the videotape when he was talking to us, Kwame Torre, mm. Stokely Carmichael. Bro, wow. I, could, I couldn't even believe he was there. I couldn't even believe it, you know? And, and he said this to us and I'm gonna share it with you because I think it was something that stands true to this day. He sat there and he knew he was, he had, he had terminal cancer and he was there and he said, I wanted to sit here and talk to y'all brothers because I think I need to tell y'all what's going on. He said, you need to show people your virtues, not your vices. He said, he said, if you're using your vices to teach somebody and make them see more of what not to do and how to navigate themselves through life, that's a good way of using them. He said, but you have to show people your, vir your, 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 your virtues. And when we sat there, he started going into all of these different things and he started telling us his journey and all of the stuff that people have done to divide us in a way that we don't even know that we're being manipulated because we don't own the magazines. We don't right. own the social media. We don't own all of the media outlets at that time. Even now, some of us don't, we own a little piece, mm -hmm. but the ones that's, the, the puppeteer is the one that's in the back pulling the strings and they put us in the front and they, and they, and they pin us against each other and then we destroy each other and then we're looking at it and we're trying to figure out what went wrong. And that is pretty much what happened with Tupac and Big. And I think that mm -hmm. after that, if you if you study it carefully, it has never been any kind of beef between the East and the West Coast that 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 equaled that because that death was so tragic and so unnecessary that I think the whole hip hop community feels it still to this day. Absolutely. You brought up Farrakhan and you also brought up early in the conversation that you studied his Hebrew Israelites now in, in the media as of late, especially in 2020, we've seen some of our black actors, black athletes come out um, in uh, opposition against the Jewish community, stating literature that may um, argue the fact that they aren't the original child of Israel that there are, are another species of people that are the child of Israel, children of Israel, excuse me. And they got the uh, the proverbial whip slapped on their back and was told to be quiet and told to apologize. What do you think about that? Um, without getting too deep or get as deep as you want about one, um, Nick Cannon, Deshaun Jackson, to name a few, coming out and stating literature um, pro-Hebrew Israelite and the backlash they received from it. Well, I think that it's funny too. So it's, it's a beautiful question, and it and it definitely doesn't strike any fear in me because I'm gonna tell the truth, you know. And 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 the truth of the matter is this: is that I think it's never what you do is how you do it, and it's the spirit that it comes from. You know, I have friends who are in, who are from the Jewish community who I love and appreciate and respect, and I have friends. From, from the Hebrew Israelite community who I love and respect. And I know that in all groups of people, the one common denominator that supersedes all of these things is the mind. So the mind of the individual, that individual can either be a person with a good mind or a bad mind. Let me give you an example. When you look at the situation with George Floyd and you see the cop holding him down on the ground like that, that cop, we believe, supposed to uphold the law. But that cop, in my opinion, has something wrong with his mind. Because for him to see that this man could not breathe, 
It does not matter if the person was white or black. If it was a white man on the floor and he did that, mm. I would still look at it and say, there's something wrong with that man's mind. Right. So I think what happens and what we get caught up in is that I think that we're getting caught up in a conversation to me that's insignificant. The conversation is insignificant because above all religion, the above all groups, the one common denominator in all people is the mind. So is the mind right of that person or is the mind wrong? Now, mm -hmm. I think that the key is one of our biggest problems that we're having is that I think that there is something wrong with our minds. Anytime you see a, a, a black man come in the hood and take a gun out and shoot things up with children around, there's something wrong with his mind. Do you agree? Yes, sir. If, if, and, 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 and when I look at the officer that did what he did to George Floyd, you could tell that there's something wrong with that man's mind. They're telling him. He had people in front of him saying, yo, look at what's going on. And he just stood there like this. No, mm -hmm. as if he had no sense of what was going on. So to me, I feel like what's happening is that we're getting caught up in, in, the, in, the, in the groups of what tribe is this and what group is this and all of these different things. But the big picture is what's going on with the person's mind. So you could be a Jewish person and your mind ain't right. You could be a, 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 a black person and your mind ain't right. And right. I also feel that when you talk about different groups of people, you should be respectful to that group of people because that group of people deserve the respect the same way if you brought me home to your mother and father and I know that they don't like profanity in the house and I'm running around and I'm just cursing up a storm. That's disrespectful to your mother and father because that's not the way they, they, they handle themselves. Now you could come to my house and my mother and father may not even care about that. So you could talk that way over there because they're okay with it. And I think that when you're talking about groups of people and, and that means us as well, we all have to be mindful of, of the sensitivity of the country, the sensitivity of the world, and how each person plays a role in this world that we live in. You know, this world is not all us or all them. We have to work together to make this thing happen. But if the person, no matter what color they are, if they're in the wrong state of mind, it don't matter what color it is. You're going to still get the wrong result. You see what I'm saying? Because yeah. that guy that's shooting things up in the hood, and I heard about it on the 4th of July when five to six to seven kids got murdered in the hood, okay? That didn't make me feel good. And every time I see on the news some officer stop uh, a brother or sister in the car and, 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 and deal with them in such a disrespectful fashion, yo, there's something wrong with these people's mind. So... So I'm just sharing with you my perspective on it because I'm looking at it from a much deeper perspective because this planet don't rock with just one race of people. It's a collective effort that makes this planet work. Mm -hmm. And you, 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 you understand where I'm coming from? I hope I'm answering your question. You are, and, yes, sir. And, and the last thing I'll say so that you know, Nick is my brother. You know, and I love Nick and and I think he should have the right to express his point of views. And basically, he should have the right to decide whether he wants to apologize or not, because I don't know how he truly feels about, you know, what he said or the people that he feel he might have offended or didn't offend or why he did it. But I do feel like when when you say something, you have to be willing to deal with everything that come with it. And one of the things that I've learned throughout my life that I apply to this day, truth out of season can be destructive. So the timing of truth is more important than the truth. So when you say something, the timing of when you say it is very important because depending on the, the, the you know, the, the temperature 
of the world, you got to be very thoughtful about how you affect people. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Deep. 